Hello, thank you for tuning in. Today I thought I would talk about Boomco. Uh, some people are super into it, even though it uh, seems to be mostly on its way out as far as stores are concerned. Um, I never really got into it all that much myself, um, mostly because I, I started out on Nerf, and you know, when, when you have the momentum of darts that are compatible, even if you're buying another brand like Busby or Dartzone, um, you might be apprehensive to switch to a completely different ammo type, but I've heard nothing but good things from people who regularly use Boomco because the ammo is supposed to be both durable and accurate, and who wouldn't want that? So, uh, for the most part, I picked up a number of these Boomco pistols while thrifting, and I understand that you can put a K26 or similarly strong spring in a Boomco blaster and get a really nice long-range, accurate, single-shot pistol. So I thought I would look into that. Now, um, some of these here we have, um, I think this is called the Far Shot. Um, this is what the, uh, this is like the M6 Halo pistol, I think. Feels pretty good. And surprisingly, my hand fits in the grip. Um, and I think this is called a plasma pistol or something like that. Um, Every, all, all four of these blasters on the desk were purchased at a thrift store, so I got them pretty cheap. Now, my understanding is that when you're going to mod one of these, um, there's a pin. Essentially, you have a conventional slide plunger, and then there's a pin towards the back, and so when you have a slide that you grab, that pin is really what pushes it back and, and primes the blaster. So there's a pin here. Um, you can see there's a pin there, and there's a pin here, and there's the large side of the pin. And um, so my understanding is removing the pin is uh, the biggest pain in the butt regarding uh, modding it, and then uh, reinserting the pin and getting it to stay after you've after you've uh, removed it. So um, what I realized is that this pistol, which is another far shot, but um, I think I got this one at the Goodwill Outlet at one point and it is, as you can already tell, um, already modified. Uh, I don't know what's going on here because I haven't removed the slide, but um, I'm guessing that whoever modified it just kind of wrenched off the entire slide, and then amusingly, I don't know if that'll show up very well, amusingly they used a, uh, a Lego piece <laughs> as a cross brace here to, uh, to get a grip, but honestly it actually grips pretty well, and they, they must have uh, taken out the lock too because you can you can fire it or deprime it without without having a dart in the barrel. So if I'm going to modify one of these, why don't I start with the one that's already modified, see what I can do spring-wise, maybe um, regarding the... Uh, I forget offhand if you're going to use Teflon tape to, uh, to give it a better seal. I want to say that you do. I'll have to watch uh, Boomtendo or a similar guide again before I go. Uh, before I go all the way into it. But to start, um, what I wanted to do is compare the stock strength of the blasters just on, on not counting the one that I know is already modified, just the, the stock uh, speeds since I have my chronograph. So I'm going to run some of these through it and then we'll talk about that. Okay, the blue M6 is shooting about 48 to 55 feet per second, which isn't a lot, but maybe that's perfectly fine for Boomco. Okay, the plasma pistol is shooting right about the same as the M6 in the low 50s. Um, I gotta say, this pistol looks pretty cool, um, but at the same time, I think I might almost have a trouble inserting a dart, like the opening. It's hard to see the it's hard to see the barrel where you put the dart. All right, and the far shot is uh, is shooting exactly the same as the other guys. So I don't know if these will show up very well, but all of the all of the uh, feet per second are in the high 40s or low 50s. And if you're comparing it head to head with Nerf. Um, that probably sounds kind of sad, uh, or at least nerf darts, because if you get a standard Elite Blaster, you might be getting 70 feet a second. If you get a Dart Zone or Busby Blaster, you might get more like 
80, 85 feet with the stock uh, spring. So, well, this person took out the uh, dark peg too. So, all right, let's take a look at this modified one. Well, I don't know what's in here yet, but uh, this isn't shooting any better. In fact, I had one dart that wouldn't fire at all, and the ones that did fire didn't go any higher than 60, so it's a little better. But uh, my understanding is that you should be able to get something more like 100 with a uh, with any of these that have a K26 in them, because I want to say that the internal mechanism, the plunger tube, and all that is uh, supposed to be basically identical between them. So. Uh, let's see if we can't improve that, why don't we? All right, I have no idea why, but you ever have that happen where you record something and then um, it just it's either not on your phone or you copied it off the phone, you can't find it, I don't know. I can't find the second segment, so I'm going to try and summarize because I don't have the heart to redo it from scratch. All right. Um, this thing didn't even really fire at all before I upgraded it. The most hilarious two things are one, there were only three screws holding this whole thing together. Uh, now there's four, so I must have found another one somewhere. Um, two, uh, instead of having plugged the lock mechanism with hot glue, they had used this, which I think is an airsoft BB. Um, I have now used hot glue. So, and for spring, I used, I think it was one of these, and I think that these are either um, C836 springs, or C832 springs from Amazon, something like that, or it's something from my local Ace. Uh, my local Ace hardware does not have the same selection that many people report online. But it's a silver spring, is this slightly shorter one. I think that this uh, longer one, I'd probably have to remove some coils. So, let's get the results, which I had recorded before, but don't have it anymore. All right, most of the results seemed to be, uh, at least prior, the results seemed to be from the mid 80s to the low 90s. I actually got all over the board here, and uh, this one gave me an average of 97, which I think is higher because that, that 137 seems like an outlier, probably an error, and uh, so I'm not sure about the 121. For that matter, the 47 seems a bit low, so I might have nicked it off the inside of the chronograph. But anyway, I am pleased with the results, and um, the one thing that I will probably still do with this is replace this uh, Lego bar with uh, probably a screw of some kind, but actually this is still pretty resilient. So. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, uh, please subscribe. I could use the subscribers, and I will see you next time.